a chef and traveled the world. And when I want to learn about a country, I go straight for the food. A country's dishes tell you the real story of a people and a place. And when I got my first taste of Spain, I instantly felt right at home. This is the Spain that most people imagine. The southern beaches of Cadiz and the streets of Seville. Beautiful senoritas, bullfighting and flamenco. This is the land of Carmen and Don Juan. Sexy, visceral and hot. Good morning. On behalf of the Tourist Board of Spain, thank you for visiting the third virtual Expo Connected Spain. Uh, we have more than 40 exhibitors at the show that can give you all the information you need to plan a dream trip to Spain. And right now we have more than 2,000 registered visitors, so thank you so much for joining us today. We are also very honored to have uh, Annie Simone with us this morning. Hi, Annie. Hi. 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 Well, I'm sure you know that Annie is the co-creator and host of a very successful and award-winning show from Spain with Love, which is produced by Shaftesbury Film, and in which she invites the viewers to discover the rich gastronomy of the Spain. But she's also the founder of Relish Culinary Tours, which designs unforgettable gastronomy adventures to Spain, with a focus being on remarkable, remarkable food, wine, and personal behind-closed-door experiences. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you. Thank you, Annie. And just for, for you to know, if you want to ask Annie any question, just uh, write it in the chat tool, and we'll pass it on to her. So, Annie, uh, you seem really passionate about what you do. How did you start your career in astronomy? Well, my, my career in gastronomy really started at home. I grew up in a completely food-obsessed uh, home, and it was pretty clear to me from a very young age that food had this incredible power thing to bring people together, and I sort of carried that throughout my life and, and definitely into my career. It's uh, definitely a profession that I'm very passionate about. I'm so passionate about Spain, but uh, also about the power that uh, food and travel has to really bring people together. And Suzanne, I'd like to, to also thank you personally and, and thank the Tourist Board of Spain for your gracious, uh, incredible support and for believing in the show from Spain with Love when it was just a dream. So thank you on behalf of all of my production team. Really means the world to us. Thank you so much, and thank, thank you. And uh, um, why did you choose to do a, a show about Spain? It was clear to me from the first visit. Uh, the first time I, I stepped foot in Spain, it was, it was love at first sight. <laughs> I knew after kind of one taste, I, I knew that I was never going to be the same. I, I had never experienced in another place like quite as uniquely um, as in Spain, this kind of on a national scale, this obsession with food. And also people are so passionate about their culture and, and also about about bringing people and loved ones around a table and connecting in that way. I, I felt really at home the first time I was in Spain. I think like the ubiquitousness of the, of, of the tapas bars, for example, creates a, a kind of social construct that just lets, lets people in Spain kind of pile out of their offices mid-morning for, for the mid-morning tapas. <laughs> it's not breakfast, it's <laughs> their second breakfast. <laughs> And uh, you know, all the way up to up to snacks and aperitivos and and tapas during the day, and then 11 o'clock, you know, 11 p.m. dinners that Spain is so famous for. It's for a girl like me, who loves to eat and who travels like you know with a one-track mind like that. It's it's heaven on earth. It really is. <laughs> nice. And uh, what do you think has been the key to the success of the show from Spain with love? Well, I think. Um, I think we, we tried to do, we set out to do some very important things uh, with From Spain with Love, and I, and I think we were successful at a few. Um, one of them being to inspire people to travel and, and, and to, to take food as a way to get into and get to know a culture 
um, through the food, through the dishes that people are the most proud of. Um, it's, it's such a strong, unifying message, I think, and, and it was so easy to do in Spain. It really was. It was one of the things that attracted me, uh, that attracted me to Spain, and it was uh, certainly one of the things, one of the, the messages that we, we wanted to be at the forefront uh, with, with the show from Spain with Love. Um, I, I also, you know, just believe that, uh, that, that the show was a success because we tried to make it very inclusive for the viewer. So although this was my journey in Spain and, and the cameras were following me, the idea was to always turn back to the camera and to, to look at those viewers and that audience as if there were friends that I was constantly trying to include. And it's funny because um, a lot of people don't know this, but, but our crew, from our crew, there wasn't anybody that spoke Spanish. There was, there was one person who spoke Spanish in our crew, and, and they weren't everywhere at all times. So I was literally constantly translating to the camera, which was actually translating everything that was going on to my team. So my team, for the most part, you saw me on camera, but I was looking at a bunch of faces that kind of didn't know what was going on until I translated it into English. So it was, uh, I think that, that we were successful in kind of portraying Spain in a very passionate authentic way and also making the audience feel really included and and making them feel inspired um, by everything that we were seeing, everything that we were living, everything that we were doing. Such incredible chefs and amazing food to see. It, 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 it was a dream come true. From Spain with Love was an absolute love letter to Spain. Mm -hmm. And um, you've been to many regions and things, so I'm going to ask you about some of the definitions. Sure. So uh, what do you think uh, shouldn't be missed from a gastronomic point of view if you visit Valencia? Valencia. I, I've only been to Valencia twice, um, and my, my second visit was, was certainly the, the most memorable. I would say that for anybody going to Valencia City, which is I believe it's the third largest city in Spain, correct? Mm -hmm. um, so it's, it's definitely had, like it definitely has so much to attract uh, tourists from all over. But, there's this one restaurant, um, which is called Restaurante Levante, uh, Levante Restaurant, and the chef and owner is uh, Rafael Vidal, and he has been called in many publications and by many people the Paella King because he is so passionate about Paella Valenciana. <laughs> he would kill me if I didn't say Valenciana. <laughs> the Paella Valenciana um, as 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 the dish to be protected in the in in the way that it's prepared and the ingredients. Um, that people use to call it a paella valenciana. Um, because paella valenciana is one of those dishes that you can find on Spanish menus like outside of Spain mm -hmm. at Spanish restaurants, except there's so many versions of it. And I think that a lot of people uh, felt that it was, um, it was becoming distorted. It was becoming sort of like an amalgamation of wherever the dish was taking place in whatever restaurant mm -hmm. um, around the world. And I think that he's done a tremendous amount to help protect that piece of kind of culinary, gastronomic patrimony, um, cultural patrimony for sure for, for Valencia. Um, so it was incredibly special to pay as like unlike anything you have ever tried. Uh, definitely one of the most memorable dishes ever. I would urge anyone if they're ever in the region of Valencia to go to restaurant Levante um, and try Rafa Vidal Paella for themselves. Um, and also a nice thing to do would be to go to the Albufera um, to see kind of, to really understand why, why paella is such an emblematic dish of the region, uh, to understand a little bit of the history of the rice fields, maybe take a tour by boat, such a nice thing. Um, and also in Alicante, not far from the city of Valencia, is um, a restaurant called Monastrel, and the chef and owner is um, Maria Jose San Roman. And she is one of the most incredible, impressive ladies um, that you could meet. And she has done so much for Spanish cuisine, kind of, you know, both in Spain and outside of Spain. And she's, uh, she's a wonderful chef. She's incredibly passionate. She created havoc on our social, um, on our, like, social networks like Twitter and, and Facebook when the olive oil episode came out. And she made this olive oil ice cream that people have been begging for the recipe. And I haven't posted it yet. <laughs> but I will. <laughs> I definitely will. But it's one of those things that uh, she really, she researches ingredients. She's passionate about ingredients. 
She's done a lot of work in recent years um, about saffron and using it in ways um, that most people don't or, or didn't think of before. So I, I have a lot, of, a lot of respect for her, and, and her daughters are also um, incredibly impressive and are both involved with her in, in the businesses. So she has Monastrel, which is a higher-end restaurant in Alicante, and also for a sort of Spanish version of a gastro bar, she has La Taberna del Gourmet, which is also in Alicante. And I would urge anybody for a taste of, of that food, food that's so traditional to Alicante, um, to go to those restaurants because, because it'll change you. Mm -hmm. And what about Madrid? Madrid. Um, Madrid is, you know, it's funny because it's one of those cities where for, for the first couple of years I felt quite alone because I would, I would be, you know, spending most of my time in the north and in the Basque country in Catalonia and then I would always end up like in Madrid on my last night and my last night would always be the most depressing night <laughs> because I would for the most part stay in my hotel but as soon as um, I met, um, I met a couple of chefs from Madrid and started um, getting introduced to the culinary scene there. It, it changed me. Like it, it really changed me. My 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 favorite restaurant in Madrid today is called El Fogón de Trifón. Uh, those who have seen um, our show from Spain with Love will 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 recognize the name um, from our um, Madrid. It's our all night, our 24 hours uh, in Madrid, which is an after hours kind of eating guide to Madrid. So we start <laughs> super late at night um, at the um, at the Mercado de San Miguel, which is one of the oldest and uh, 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 covered markets in Madrid, which has uh, recently been renovated. It's a place where you can go and buy fish and produce and have a glass of wine in a tapa. It's a wonderful place. And then we continue to Fogón de Sifón, which is a minuscule restaurant and, and, and shouldn't create as much commotion as it creates, <laughs> but the owner of Sifón is one of the most affable, one of the most warm and gracious and charming and cool host that you can ever imagine that the restaurant maybe only has four or five tables, but somehow when you go, there's always room, you know, for a seat at the bar or, 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 or even at, at a table. It's, um, it's a pretty magical place. And I, I urge anybody, do not miss this restaurant. Do not miss El Fogón de Pijón because it's one of the most memorable meals you'll have. Very traditional, like traditional Spanish dishes, but done with a super unique touch. And uh, and definitely a night that you won't forget. And it's a night that you can definitely go late. It's a, it's a place where you can eat late and and have a fabulous, amazing time. It's uh, it's my first stop in Madrid. Right. And what about Andalusia in southern Spain? Andalusia. Andalusia is um, it's one of those mysterious, super romantic, um, very. You know, just such a charming place. There's so many places in Andalusia, but what I would uh, I would probably recommend um, Granada. Granada is one of the, my top destinations in uh, Andalusia. It has kind of everything that you're looking for. It has you know the legacy of uh, of the Christians, the Moors, the Jews, kind of all there, and much more. You know, you also have like the Gypsies, for example, and you have the Phoenicians and the Romans. Um, but it can be tasted tasted in everything. You, you, you taste the cultural legacy. Um, it's, it's a pretty, pretty spectacular place. And I would recommend that people go to the Al Baisin, which is the old Arab quarter, of course, um, just to get you feel like you're walking in the streets of like North Africa, for example. And there's this one bar, which I never tell anybody about. And, well, you won't tell anybody about <laughs> it. <laughs> um, it's called Bar FM. Um, bar FM in, in Spanish, and FM stands for Francisco Martin. Um, Francisco, as you know, in Spanish, like sometimes as a, you know, as a short form, uh, they say Paco. So I know him as Paco Martin, but it's uh, FM for Francisco Martin. It's uh, also a tiny, tiny bar that um, I have no idea. I can't even remember the person who told me about it, but I can't find it in any guidebook. And it is a temple for seafood, a temple for seafood, unlike any other bar probably that I've tried in Spain. It's, uh, it's run by Francisco and his wife, and it's in a rural suburb 
so not in the like not right in the city center of Granada, which which explains why it's such a local site, and not that many tourists actually end up there. So we did film there in our Granada episode, and one of the coolest, craziest, um, wackiest things that I've ever seen is the way that they do this dish, which is called pulpo seco, which is dried octopus. And it's an actual um, ancient Phoenician technique of drying octopus. And literally, we took the tentacles, we cleaned them, and we hung them on clothespins on, on a clothing line in the kitchen with, like, a fan. And, you know, so they're semi-dry. They still have some moisture. Um, and it's just simply sliced and served with some cabbage um, on a plate and just lightly dressed. It is to die for, and I've never seen it anywhere else, uh, anywhere. So, you know, it may exist out there, but, but I know that I've been dreaming um, since we filmed there to go back just for that dish and to see that lovely, lovely couple from Barra Nice. And uh, Santiago de Compostela in Northern Spain? <laughs> Santiago de Compostela, um, it is uh, an incredible place. And I think that probably a lot of tourists don't go um, to Galicia that often because it's a little farther, but it really isn't. Um, it's, it's, it's really the same like going to any other destination in Spain. It's just a short plane ride from, from Madrid or from any other major city. And it is for a seafood lover, like, and I'm a seafood lover. <laughs> it is, it's heaven. Like it, it's, it's an incredible place to visit. And certainly one of my favorite restaurants in the country and my favorite restaurant in Santiago is called Casa Marcelo. And we filmed at Casa Marcelo for um, our Seafood to Die For episode, which was also an award-winning episode. Um, and the chef, his name is Marcelo Tejedor, and uh, also created a lot of commotion on our social feeds, Twitter and Facebook, because um, we have a little bit of a sexy scene there <laughs> in that episode. But it's... Uh, it was it was such an incredible experience. It really was. <laughs> and what about Toledo? Toledo. 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 Um, it is uh, definitely a place where I would say that that people should visit. It's uh, it's it's uh, a city also where you feel the three cultures um, and and it's just the history is so apparent and it's, the air is so thick with the history and the beauty and the grandeur when you're driving into Toledo and we were driving in like right at sunset, nobody could speak. And I was thinking to myself, I couldn't believe I was even there. I couldn't believe what I was what I was looking at. I couldn't believe that we were about to enter like, such incredible beauty. And uh, it's it's definitely something that I, I won't forget. It's filled with 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 all sorts of monuments, um, synagogues and churches and mosques and 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 the architecture is, is so stunning. It's just it looks like it's out of a storybook and it's definitely it's not that far from Madrid um, to drive or to take a train. So I would urge almost anyone like don't don't go to, to Madrid if, if if you're not gonna also go to Toledo. It's just such an amazing place. And the best restaurant that I found in Toledo is that uh, called Restaurant Adolfo. And it is a really special place run by a father and son. Uh, Adolfo is the father and Javier is the son. So Adolfo and Javier Munoz is the last name. Um, really passionate family. And we filmed with them in our olive oil episode as well. And, and when I think of the restaurant, I remember something super special that happened there was they, they, they cook in a, in a really, in a really subtle and, and clean way where kind of Flavors, the, pure, the purity of the flavors um, really prevail in all of the dishes, um, and and they're not they're not too many ingredients in in a dish. They're they're just beautiful in their simplicity and their mastery of technique, and and we were making together a saffron rice, and Javier the son disappeared into the wine cellar, and he's the sommelier of the uh, of the restaurant as well. Um, and he came back with what looked like almost like a treasure box filled with saffron. That when he opened it, it looked like you know there was a light beaming from the box <laughs> and illuminating his face. It, just, it looked so like such a religious experience. It was the most incredible thing 
that that we that we probably ate on that trip, and they make a really special wine called Pago de Ama, and it's worth a trip to Toledo just to buy a bottle of their exquisite wine. They they made us the saffron risotto risotto, sorry, <laughs> um, a saffron rice and uh, and served it with this incredible wine and made a toast that had us all in tears. And I wish I could remember it, but the, the guys in our crew were reciting it because they knew that if they made that toast to any woman, she would fall in love madly <laughs> with them. So probably two very, very, very charming, charming guys and definitely a house, a restaurant where you'll walk into and feel like there's a purpose to this trip and that you're being welcomed into somebody's home. Beautiful. I'm going to pass you a question yes. from one of our listeners. Okay. He's asking or she's asking. I don't know the name. Okay. They're asking if uh, there is any interest, interesting blog that you can recommend to find details about restaurants, recipes, and unknown spots uh, in Spain. Yes. Um, so blogs, no, but publications. I'm not very familiar with any blogs about Spain, but publications. Um, the... Uh, Spain Gourmet Tour is one of the uh, the publications that I would definitely say is, is, is an incredible resource. We, we used it as a resource when we were researching also um, for our crew, so it was, uh, and for the filming, so it was, it was certainly, it was very, very useful. The photography is stunning, mm -hmm. and they're really on top of kind of what's, uh, what's going on for sure um, in Spain. There's another um, publication that is, spectacular, which is called Cook Circus. And um, one of the guys that's involved in it, his name is Xavier Aguillo, and he's uh, from Catalonia, he's from Barcelona, and he's a very, very respected journalist, um, and he also, you know, he runs this publication, which is unbelievable. Photography is also um, incredible, just as Spain Gourmet Tour. So those two, I'm always reading their articles, for mm -hmm. sure. And they can also follow you, obviously, right? Or yeah, I, and I mean the uh, the show from Spain of Love is, is a great resource. It was it was for sure something that we intended. Um, we we intended for people to kind of leave the series, and as they were following the series, um, with resources, with tools, almost like that they had a guidebook that they could kind of follow in our footsteps. And nothing was staged. We didn't go to anywhere that was mediocre. I'm, uh, I, I kind of, I shun, you know, all of those middle of the road places and I just go to seek out very, very special places or because they're so traditional um, and unique or super rustic or very elaborate um, and, and avant-garde. So it's, it's, uh, it's, an, it's kind of a nice point of view because people who travel a lot, I think, um, don't, don't need my help, you know, for the middle of the road. But I think that extra guidance for what really rustic, what's really traditional, what's really unique. Um, you'll find a lot of that on the show. I, I, I wish um, that we, we had a book um, about all of the places that we visit because it would make an absolutely fantastic uh, guidebook for sure. And I would mention that for another show um, which did so much for also for Spain and uh, we watched also as research um, for our show and I have a tremendous amount of respect for him is Jose Andres's show, um, Made in Spain. So that is also a series that, although it's been around for a few years, it still has an unbelievable following because he's so dynamic and charismatic and so passionate and also so talented and, of course, knows the country inside and out. It's, um, it's, it's a fantastic series, and I would urge anybody who loves Spain to watch From Spain with Love and also to watch Made in Spain with Jose Andres. Mm -hmm. Okay, so another listener is asking us, um, is there any culinary festival that you could recommend to, to visit? I'm mm. guessing here or in, uh, it doesn't specify if it's here. Probably, right? probably in Spain. Um, mm. hmm. <laughs> I can't remember all of the names off the top of my head. Um, I know that there is uh, Madrid uh, Fusion, uh, which is, um, is in, in Madrid every year, and there's also Gastronomica which is in San Sebastian every year. Um, those two are definitely, uh, those two are definitely festivals that, uh, 
you know, conferences, festivals that I, I, I go to every year. Uh, they attract the best chefs in the country, the best chefs from around the world. Certainly, and if you're not a trade person, like if you're not from um, the industry necessarily, there are, there are also plenty of things that you that you can enjoy, kind of being, um, you know, from the public. And definitely around Madrid, Pusian, like Madrid is totally, you know, like exploding with like commotion and energy and fun and filled with chefs, like you know, chefs that are both artists and total delinquents. <laughs> that seems to be. <laughs> You know, something that's pretty common, like with uh, all, you know, very brilliant chefs from around the world. It's, uh, it's, there's no, for me, there's, there's, there's no more fun that you can have. Mm -hmm. Chefs are so, so much fun because they work so hard and they know how to have fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and another person, Itasina, what will be your top three favorite Spanish dishes? Top three favorite mm -hmm. Spanish dishes. So hard um, because I think um, because Spain is such a, a, a varied you know the between the regions like the the cuisine varies so much um, both because of culture but also climate topography all of those things where you have you know certain ingredients that grow in one region and, and not in others like even language and even politics that can play um, a role in, in in kind of what people of the region eat so I would. You know, having that said, I can't narrow it down to three, but but I will. Um, <laughs> I, I will just for the purposes of this question. Um, you know, the back country I spend a lot of time. Um, I would say that um, merluza and salsa verde, which is a hake and green sauce, mm -hmm. is probably one of uh, you know definitely one of my top three dishes. It was my first dish that I ever had um, in San Sebastian on my first visit to the to the back country. So I would definitely say it's very easy to make at home. Um, you can look up a recipe, probably even a recipe that I wrote uh, on the internet, and uh, and make it and make it at home. It's incredible. I would say though, it's not a dish per se, but jamón, jamón, jamón. <laughs> Lots of ham. Like I often joke that I'm completely made of ham because it must like. It must make up every single fiber of my body because I eat my weight in ham every single time I go to Spain. So I uh, I love I love ham and it's um, you know Spanish jamón uh, whether it's um, ibérico de bellota like the black hook pig or whether it's um, jamón serrano uh, serrano ham there it's just a flavor that I can't get out of my system when I get back home and I need it all the time and. You know, like often smuggle in like a couple of these, <laughs> so I can eat it at the airport. <laughs> and let's see, a third dish would have to be. It would be a toss-up, I think, between Rafa Vidal Paella Valenciana in in Valencia and. The bull's tail stew, the uh, estofado de Raúl de Toro, and in the restaurant El Fogón de Sifón in Madrid. Mm -hmm. So I would say there is no trip to Spain probably that I don't have those dishes, and and I need them. And if I come back to Canada without having those dishes, I uh, I I'll collapse like out of sheer anguish. <laughs> I think we're all salivating right now. <laughs> and, uh, um, one other listener is uh, asking us if uh, in Valencia can you learn how to cook a paella? We would like to know. Yes, absolutely. So um, definitely. So the same restaurant that I spoke about, which is uh, Restaurante Levante, and it's a Levante restaurant, and mm -hmm. the chef and owner is Rafael Vidal. He gives um, cooking courses, mm -hmm. which we also uh, we also took part in one of his cooking courses. Um, when we were filming the show, it was such an extraordinary experience. He really, he really gets, you know, to the kind of no, no nonsense, like heart and soul of of what what a pay of Valenciana means and and how to kind of do it step by step. And it's definitely something that you can reproduce anywhere. Um, you know, ideally it's done over an open fire, but if you don't have that, you can also do it. On a stovetop or even like a, a gas grill, 
outside uh, for sure, but he has cooking classes that he runs all year long, and I've sent many people through my company, through Relish, uh, to to learn how to make paella from him, and people's lives have you know been mm -hmm. changed for sure. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's one of those impressive go-to dishes that for any party, like imagine bringing out a huge paella like to the table and give everybody just like their own spoons. And there's rules, you know, like Rafa, he taught me that there's rules to eating a paella. Or you put it in the center of the table and, and everybody kind of gathers around the table. And I love that. I love that the dish brings people together. But also that there's, there are like these imaginary lines in the paella pan where everybody kind of knows that this is my paella here. Like I can't go over there <laughs> and eat your paella. It's, it's just a, you know, a line that you can't see, but you kind of stay within your area. Um, I got my hand slapped by Rafa because I went to his side of the paella pan. <laughs> so I learned quickly. <laughs> That's great. And there was one other question. Oh, yeah, about the market. This person loves San Miguel's market. Yes. And um, they're asking if you know any other market, like maybe in Barcelona or Madrid, that you... Maybe yeah, have. Um, definitely. There's a... Uh, Certainly one of my favorite um, markets in Spain is uh, the Boqueria market, Mercado de la Boqueria in, in Barcelona. One of my favorite spots, uh, we, in our, in our episode about Barcelona, we, we started off at the market. And I love this question, by the way, so thank you, because the market has always kind of symbolized for me um, a sort of like a, a rooted kind of starting point, a starting point that grounds me. I, Whenever I go to a place for the first time or I'm in a country for the first time or in a city that I don't know, I start at the market because, you know, there's, there's a history behind this, but I, I found myself in South America as a young girl in a city that I didn't know and I didn't know Spanish and I didn't know anyone and I went to the market um, in Quito, Ecuador, that was the place. and. Something transformative happened to me there where I realized that I was being fed by these lovely ladies in that market and that I understood the context of everything that was happening around me um, because I grew up in a home like I did. And the same thing happened. And the first time I went to Barcelona, I went to the, to the Boqueria market. And I had this moment where I kind of understood everything. So it's like my rule now where I go to a new city, a new place, and I start at the market. It's it's my it's my ground zero, and I feel like I can approach the city and understand it once I see the activity in the market and once I see the people. And for the market, I, I have to tell you too about two places um, where you definitely you know won't be disappointed. Is uh, uh, one is called Bar Pinocho, um, and it's right when you go into the Boqueria market um, from the entrance of uh, the Rambla. So it's right at the entrance, just slightly to your right. And the thing to do in Barcelona is always going to be full. Always, there's, it's, there's never going to be a seat available. But don't worry, like do as they do in Barcelona and just stand behind someone <laughs> and wait for them to finish and get up, and then and then you know um, just take their seat, which is how to get a seat there, but. You will not be disappointed. The, the food is incredible. It's all small dishes. One of my favorite things to order is um, a scrambled eggs and kind of clam dish, um, and also baby squid and, uh, and, and a special kind of white bean from, from Catalonia, so squid and, and white bean. It's a, it's a very special place, and the owner, um, Juanito, is quite a famous character in Barcelona. He's really one of the most charming like charming men that you'll ever ever meet. He uh, he's been there forever. It seems he knows everyone, and the quality is always impeccable. Like they never fail. And there's another great um, bar that I also discovered on a recent trip to Barcelona with um, a good friend of mine whose name is uh, uh, Carlos Avellan, and he's also a chef in Barcelona, very, very supremely talented and probably most well-known for his restaurants, Tapas 24, um, and also Comer 24, but also Bravo 24, which is spectacular, and a new Tapas bar that they opened, just called Suculent. And he took me also to a bar in the Boqueria market that's called El Kim de la Boqueria. 
and it is a, a fabulous place. I think we probably ate everything on the menu, and maybe our last course was a big burger with like a big slab of foie gras, and needless, I didn't eat for two days after, um, but that was such a memorable experience, and, uh, and, and I would urge anybody to go to the Bokeria Market, and I would also urge for that tapas, you know, a tapas restaurant that you'll never forget is Tapas 24 in Barcelona. I have to go there once a day when I'm in Barcelona because they're open from breakfast until dinner. So I just choose what meal I go to. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. And what is next for you? What is next for Annie Q&A? <laughs> well, um, we have some stuff cooking, definitely. <laughs> I'm being a little coy because, I, you know, it's not public yet. I can't, uh, I can't uh, give you uh, the details. Um, but definitely some stuff cooking, and it will definitely involve uh, me eating a lot <laughs> and also getting on a plane. So definitely stay tuned. Um, you can uh, go to our Facebook page. So it's uh, Annie Cibonet from Spain with Love, and we'll be updating everyone um, as soon as we can on this really new and exciting project, and uh, also on Twitter at Annie Cibonet, and uh, also at relish-tours.com. Wow, thank you so very much, no, Annie. Thank you. It's a pleasure sharing with you this interview and um, your love for Spain and the food. And uh, well, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so thank much. Thank you. The pleasure was all mine. And thank you to all of you who tuned in. Um, it was wonderful to, uh, to be able to speak about Spain, obviously so passionate about it. And I really urge everyone to just, you know, stop thinking about it. Just buy a ticket, get on a plane, and just go devour the country. It's so worth it, and it will change you forever. Thank you. Thanks so much. And for those of you listening to us, uh, thank you uh, for joining us. And uh, now we invite you to visit the more than 40 exhibitors at the Virtual Expo Conexión Spain. Uh, please chat with them and, and let them help you organize your next trip to Spain. So uh, you will also have a chance to win more than 20 prizes, including amazing trips to Spain. Just saying. <laughs> thank you, and have a, a really good day. Thanks. Goodbye.